Hi everyone, my name is Professor Benjamin and I will be your instructor for this condensed seven week course. Couple things, so the objective of this video is to give you a overview of the course, how it's run, how you're graded, etc. So this is a great, a great video for you to watch to understand kind of how the course is set up, what uh, my expectations are, everything else. Now, this video does not take the place of you reading the syllabus and the course information session, but it at least will give you some kind of background information on the course. So the course is set up um, with the home page here, and um, of course, all of the requirements are here for the course, and I'll be walking you through that in this video. So this course, Environmental Conservation, is an awesome course. Um, I have a little background information on, on me and what gives me the ability to teach this course. Um, you'll find this video right here um, and the syllabus right here. So Environmental Conservation will cover a whole host of content this semester from, um, you know, the, the crux of the whole issue of tragedy of the commons, looking for our short-term gain versus our long-term interest. We'll look at air pollution, climate change, population, water issues, ethics, economics, policy. We'll look at consumption and we'll look at sustainability. We'll look at renewable and non-renewable resources. So we cover a ton of information in a short condensed period. This course meets your non-lab science requirements. So this is a science course. It is a science bound course. Um, so it's like taking biology without the lab, okay? Um, it also meets uh, the scientific reasoning um, general education requirement. It meets, it is also a social science elective um, for some of you. So it meets a lot of checks, a lot of boxes. So it will require um, an intense kind of um, outlook, a scientific outlook. So everything in this course is factually sound. So we have opinions but our opinions really don't mean anything unless we back it up with factual basis and we back it up with scientific facts as to why things are the way they are um, and so here are the course learning outcomes we're going to demonstrate an understanding of natural um, of nature and the environment its basic components flow cycles interrelationships we're going to describe the role of various human activities that place stress demonstrate an understanding of the interrelationships uh, between humans and the physical environments, identify several major environmental problems, explain um, carrying capacity, and describe viable solutions to the major uh, environmental problems facing society. So we will do that in every single item I give you ties to one of those learning outcomes. So I am a big believer that I don't just give you busy work. Everything is tied to those learning outcomes. The next item you see here are our announcements. Each week I send out announcements, reminders, et cetera. So make sure that you're always logging in and I suggest you log in daily and you look at the announcements. The modules, of course, um, I already put up a little announcement for you. The modules, of course, will be our main way that we um, our course is set up and I'm gonna go back to that in a second. Right here is the syllabus and of course, um, you make sure you're gonna read the syllabus because I actually have you certify the syllabus in the first um, session. Um, so I actually have you sign a statement that you've read the syllabus. Um, the grades is right here. So as always, I will have everything graded within one week of submittal, usually way before that. Um, and so you'll know how your grades are going as we move through the semester. If you're not sure of how to use the grades tab, under the course information session, I have a video on how to use the grades tab. Starfish, if you do not have Office 365 on your computer, here it is, meaning um, Microsoft Word, Excel, etc. So you can use this um, to write all of your papers, etc. Um, and then you don't have to worry about converting over if you have um, a MacBook, etc. So let's walk through um, how the course is set up. These modules contain everything you need um, to succeed for the semester. Right here is the course information module, instructions for the course, how to use the grades tab, requirements for assignments, um, and then you can see here directions for initial posts and response posts. This is absolutely essential you read these documents. Um, they give you all of the requirements that I have for initial posts and response posts. I know you may, may be used to in other classes where you just submit whatever you feel or you think in this class it's way different um, each initial post is like a mini paper 
and I'll get more into that in a little bit. Um, if you're not sure how to use references or how to cite sources, right here is a great document for you. And then I give you a little video for turn it in because all of our assignments will be used um, not our forum posts, but our assignments, our written assignments. Well, you can use Turnitin to help you. Okay, so that's the course information session. But you'll see here, each session contains a lot of things. Now, it's grayed out here because it's not open yet. And you'll see it unlocks on January 8th. Everything opens um, at least a week or two before it's due. So you have plenty of time to submit your work. And because this is a condensed semester, we will be covering not only one session a week, we will be covering two sessions every week um, because we cover 14 sessions and it's a seven week class. So two sessions per week. Remember, just because this isn't in 15 week format doesn't mean that we cut off credits. You're still receiving three credits, but it's in the condensed format. So it's absolutely essential that you do that. If you look, each session is set up with a description. So you're going to read the description. Here's a little video lecture that I've made. Here's the textbook. And the chapter that's assigned to the textbook is in the description or what parts of the textbook I want you to read is under the description. Then you have a PowerPoint. Um, and in the PowerPoint, um, there are all embedded videos as well, and under if you open the PowerPoint in PowerPoint or in slides, you can underneath our notes um, under each slide, and then there are additional readings and videos you must watch, so it's really important. You will then find your introduction forum, and if you have any assignments due. Now, I'll add the certification of syllabus to here um, as soon as I'm done this video. Um, but you'll see that if you have an assignment due, it's here. And for every assignment, I give you a walkthrough video. So I tell you what I'm looking for. But you'll also want to look at the rubric. Um, in every assignment, there's a rubric. You want to look at that, and you want to read through the instructions that are given. Um, and if you do that, you can easily succeed in this course. Course. Where I find students go awry is when they don't read the directions or they don't look at the rubric on how I'm going to grade you or they do not watch the walkthrough video. So all the tools you need are right there to succeed. Let me tell you a little bit about the forums. So forums are due every week for each session. So remember, you're going to have two initial posts due, two response posts due for each session. Um, and well, one for each session, so we're covering two sessions per week. Um, and the initial post is due by Wednesday, even though the due date says Friday here. Um, initial posts are always due by Tuesday, uh, by Wednesday. Response posts are due by Friday. Every week, the same thing. Initial posts are due by Wednesday. Response posts are due by Friday. And you want to make sure you get into that rhythm. So while the due date says Friday, the initial part of that, the initial post is due by Wednesday each week. You are given a choice of six questions in the introduction in all the forums. Um, only six people can answer each question, and then the question becomes out of play. What do I? Why do I do that? Because what happens is students copy other students' work, and they just keep repeating the same information. So if you like a question, one of the six questions, you want to get in earlier than Wednesday and answer that question. If you're the seventh, eighth, ninth person to answer the same question, you're not given credit for your initial post. If you miss the initial post deadline on Wednesday, you are not given credit for your initial post. So you get about seven points for your initial post, six points for your response post. If you miss the deadline, then you just submit the response post to a fellow classmate and you'll only receive six points for that session. So I do not give extensions. If it's if it's after the deadline, you do not receive credit. Just that's how it is. Um, and so it's important for you to do that. Remember, two sessions per week. So the first week of this class, you will have an initial post due by Wednesday for session one and session two and a response post due by Friday for session one and session two. Again, you want to make sure you read the directions for initial posts and response posts before you make those um, forum posts because there are specific standards. These initial posts are like mini papers. So you want to use paragraphs, at least 300 words, etc. Okay, so there's all sorts of reasons in there. The other thing for initial posts and response posts, you cannot use outside material. You can only use sources I have given you within the modules to write your posts. And the reason for that is because no one can respond to your post if you're using stuff from the outside because we haven't had privy to read that information. So it's absolutely essential that you use 
information that we have given you in this course to formulate your reasoning and your posts for this class. Okay, so that's initial post response post. So in this class, forms are worth 30% of your grade. If there is an assignment due, it is found within the module. You'll have four assignments due this semester. So you'll have form posts due for each week, but you'll only have four assignments due. You are given two drop forum posts for the entire semester. You are not given any dropped assignments. So you only have four of them. Do not miss any of the assignments that are due throughout the semester, okay? No assignments are dropped. Forum posts are dropped, but no assignments are dropped. The assignments are like written papers. And as always, remember, I just said that a little bit ago, but I give you a walkthrough video, et cetera. I give you a rubric. I give you instructions. Follow the directions and you should do fine. All assignments in this class are single spaced. They are not double spaced. Paragraphs are essential. They are papers. They are written papers for this class, okay? And then um, you also will be required to use Turnitin for your assignments. If uh, the scientific method assignment does not need Turnitin, but your other three writing assignments do need Turnitin. So you are uh, required to use Turnitin. Um, and Turnitin is a wonderful tool to help you too. So it helps you look at your grammar errors, shows you where you might have some issues with sourcing. So make sure that you watch this video um, if you're not sure what Turnitin or, is, or you have not had to use Turnitin yet this semester. The other thing is, is you are, um, you are given a midterm and a final, and I give you all the questions that are on the midterm and final exam. The midterms were 20% of your grade, the finals worth 20% of your grade, okay? No makeups or extensions are given. This is a no excuse course. Um, so you're given those two drop form posts in case an emergency comes up. Other than that, you have the due dates um, and you have to meet the due dates for this class. Um, and I give you all the questions well before the midterm and you'll see like a review for the midterm and then I actually give you a video on kind of where to find all the information on the midterm exam. So you want to watch the walkthrough um, and then you are given the midterm and the final. Uh, the midterm is you're given three hours for the midterm and the final, but you will run out of time if you don't write out the answers or type out the answers before the midterm and the final. So it's really important for you to um, start typing out the answers well before the midterm and the final exam. Um, and then really the final exam in the midterm, are you copying and pasting your information into the midterm or the final exam portal? There are no games played in this course. You are given the questions ahead of time. You type out the answers and then um, put them into the portal. Okay. And as always, you cannot use outside sources for the midterm and final exam. So that is, I know, a big overview, but all that same information can be found in the syllabus. It can be found in the uh, instructions for the course, as well as on the homepage, kind of what the expectations are for the course. This is an asynchronous course, meaning that we don't meet at specific times. I will have check-in points where I check in with you. I host a little Zoom session, and if you have questions or concerns, you're more than welcome to log in during those Zoom sessions. Um, so this is not a course where we meet at a specific time and I lecture. Those lectures are found within the modules. Um, so you do kind of all the work on your own and just make sure you're meeting the due dates for the class. Again, I don't give extensions or anything. And the reason for that is because it becomes a little bit of a gray area when you give extensions. Because if I give somebody one extension, um, that's not fair to everybody else who might have had to take off from work to submit something or cut back their hours that week. It's not fair. It gets into a gray area where there's injustices. And I believe in giving everyone the same playing field um, to play on in this class. And the minute I start manipulating that, it, it becomes too hard for me. Um, actually, like morally and like I can't sleep at night because I gave somebody a break and I didn't give somebody else a break and that's not fair. So I think it's really important for us that everybody gets the same standards in the course and either you meet those standards or you don't. And unfortunately, that's how life is as well. So make sure that you um, you understand the expectations up front, you know what you're getting into, and that you meet those expectations for this course. I think you'll find the content really enjoyable. Most students do find the content enjoyable. They'll say to me, I was very worried about taking a science class, but then once I took your course, I realized how relevant this course is to everything that's going on around me. 
I have students succeed every semester and I know most of you will succeed in this course. So I look forward to starting this journey with you. As always, if you have questions, you reach out before it becomes a problem. I'm always available to help you. Looking forward to starting this journey with you.